We're back in the studio after a week at the Game Developers Conference. We're talking what's hot at South by Southwest this week and a look at Twerty, a golf game that is so much more than just a golf game. This episode of App Judgment is brought to you by Squarespace. Welcome to App Judgment, your source for mobile app news and reviews. I'm Mauricio Bavanera. And I'm Ron Richards. Ron, what are you doing here? I'm, I'm, I missed my flight and I didn't go to South By. Uh, is that what happened? <laughs> yeah, no, I didn't even go to South By this okay. year. So I figure it's a lot more fun to watch from home and see all the fun everyone's having down I there. agree. Watch it yeah. through the Twitter. So exactly. there's a lot of people at South By Southwest right now. Yep. I checked in with Prager. I checked in with Jim. Uh, just kind of asked them, what are the hot apps right now? Because, of course, Twitter and, and Foursquare blew up. The, I mean, the history of South By Southwest and, and apps like Twitter and Foursquare, when the years the years that those apps broke was, was at South By Southwest. when Because Twitter was out for a, a good six months or so, and then they went to South By, and it blew up. Right. Same thing with Foursquare a couple years later. And so every year, it's kind of, what app is going to yeah. blow up? And it's almost to the point where it's never going to happen again, but everybody wants to know it, what it might like be. It's like the Beatles. It's yeah. never going to happen again. Exactly. Maybe. Well, OK, so the big thing that's, that's well, the big buzzword that's happening right now is this um, SOMO, the social yep. mobile applications. And uh, there's three in particular that, that uh, seem to be um, popular at in Austin right now and that's Glancy, Highlight and Banjo. And basically mm -hmm. what they mean by by SOMO, social mobile is these applications that aggregate data from your social networks and make it useful to you in a mobile fashion. Yeah, and it's interesting to see the different kind of approaches they take. Like a, an app like Banjo has been around for a while. I yeah. actually heard of it before South By. And what that does is it aggregates um, the various social network feeds that are out there, whether it's Twitter or, or Facebook or um, Instagram, and gives you the world around you, whether it's your friends or not. But, yeah. but more often than not, it's like, oh, great, Mao's down the road from me, and I saw you just posted a picture. And it, it applies a geographic location to those posts. Yeah. But uh, Glancy and Highlight are more about don't worry about your friends. There are people around you. Yeah, yeah. and it's that's the way they work. It <laughs> yeah. kind of gives you context, like yep. your your neighbor's girlfriend, or I, I don't know. It, it actually gives you good conversation starters to begin with. Which is weird, because like Glancy specifically, I was looking at it, they're like, yeah. meet new people. Right. Like, that guy down the street could be talking about something you're interested in. And yeah. I'm like, I don't know if I want to know <laughs> about that. Someone, like, excuse I don't, me. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I just, I just noticed <laughs> that um, you're into gerbils. <laughs> right. And it's funny, because like that's almost like the, it, it's this promise of the socially enabled mobile universe yeah. has been around for a while. Going back pre four square to Dodgeball, part of Dodgeball was it would tell you where people were, whether you knew them or not, and kind of where the party is and that yeah. sort of thing. Um, and the, every couple of years, more apps come and they try to utilize location-based stuff to pick up the slack from that. And it never really takes off with a gold peak because I think we're too worried about privacy and that sort of thing. Yeah. But, uh, I don't, but it was interesting to see those apps get called out specifically. It's going to be interesting to see what's going to become of these applications in the yeah. few months post the, the post uh, South by experience. Well, as as with Twitter and Foursquare and every other social app that comes out, it's defined by the number of people using it. Right. So if there's a critical mass of a lot of people here in San Francisco using it, I'm sure we'll start using it because yeah. we'll see activity. But unless people pick it up, of course, in South by it's a concentrated, you know, eight block area of people <laughs> dying to try a new app. So yeah, of course, yeah. it seems like it's the best thing in the world. Let's see how it plays in Topeka. It's good testing yeah. ground. So. Definitely. <laughs> Speaking of South by Southwest, uh, there's a big announcement there. Instagram is well, coming. Is it, was it an announcement? To Android. <laughs> it was an. It was an announcement. We look. We've known it's coming. Well, yeah. Well, this. And, and and it was actually demoed on stage. This was the big, if you ask me, this was the biggest Shame. vaporware, non-news, clearly no news was coming out of South by Southwest. Because all I know is uh, I woke up on the weekend, I think it was Sunday or whatever, mm -hmm. and saw everybody's tweets, Instagram, Android. I'm like, awesome, finally. Here the, it is. The most platformist app of them all. And I searched them, I it? searched Google Play, and I couldn't find uh, it. Where is it? And I dug a little deeper and realized that it's, it's not out yet. It's still not out yet. This several days later, it's not out yet. All they did was they announced it's coming and did a demo of it, which is great, but much ado about nothing right now. Until I see it, then, you know. So so was this a, a, a missed milestone by, by Instagram? Do you think they meant to have released it by I, I've got to believe that. I got Because you want to launch this out there. It would have it would have been huge for Android. It would have been huge for Instagram. Yeah. I got to imagine they missed their deadline. Um, but that said, they did say that they like it better than the iPhone version. That was uh, why, So why do you think that is? What, what do you know. think are going to be the features? Well, I mean, aside from Android's superiority just from the get-go, 
<laughs> We're both Android users, yeah, by the way, so yeah, we can so say that. Disclaimer. Um, no, I don't know, and I'm excited to see what it is okay. because like, I've wanted to participate in the Instagram world, but All I right. haven't been able to. All so. Right. A little more wider entertainment here. Yeah, a little on the game side of things. Um, also, announcement at South by Southwest was uh, the next iteration of Angry Birds uh, in space. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think it was. I think the, some of the trailers came out before South by Southwest. But yeah. have you seen the game mechanics in, in it? No, I haven't actually. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, I, I, it's I'm trying to keep distance from Angry Birds. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. it's using uh, gravitational physics. I was wondering because because with space, it's it, yes. it, it's a new dimension to the physics aspect of shooting the bird, breaking everything over. What happens when the rate of gravity changes? Yeah. Yeah. And, and not just, so I thought, okay, well, we're going to be dealing with planets. You yeah. deal with multiple planets, too. You can yeah. you can traverse uh, atmospheres and go into other gravitational pools. I wonder if there'll be some sort of ricochet effects that you can go on and bouncing Probably. things off. And, and, yeah, I yeah. think I did yeah. see some of that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It it's could look, be interesting. It's, it's looking pretty awesome. I'm not the biggest fan of that, that franchise, but... Um, well, they, they, I'm looking forward to playing. Well, they've been a leader of such of it. And, and was yeah. it announced that it was Android first, or was that, I think, uh, no? Yeah. Uh, so it's supposed to release um, iOS, Android, Mac, and PC all, right. all at the same yeah, time. Yeah, and it's branded and all that. Like they, they've really <clears> learned <throat> how to market these games. Oh yeah. And it's going to be interesting to see how if, if, if they continue their success. Yeah. Um, but do they learn or do they buy a marketing department? Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Other big news. A lot of this news is because we were at GDC, so we missed a lot of them. You probably already know about this, but we wanted to address it. iPhoto is now on iOS. iPhoto mobile, basically. Yeah. Um, you're, you're an Android user. I do. Well, actually, you have an iPad as well. I do have an iPad, yeah. Well, okay. I try to stay, you know, stay compatible. So one of the things, one of the, uh, I bought Aperture yep. because of iCloud, because as soon as I take a picture, iCloud is going to sync it to my computer. And yep. I bought Aperture only so I can edit photos that I immediately you know, I take a picture sure. and it's now on my computer. I don't need to do all that now. Basically, I can just use uh, the application on, on my iPad or on no. my iPhone and, 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 and do a, that. And a much more user-friendly uh, uh, kind of interface. So that, not that Aperture isn't user-friendly, but it's a bit more pro. <coughs> and so that is, I, I, that's the key difference there. It's not nearly as powerful as Aperture, obviously. Right. But I think it gets the job done but for when, most people. When you think about what's the purpose of iPhoto, iPhoto is photo editing and manipulation for the people. It's yeah. for the average user, so this just enables, you know. And I know, you know, on the Android side of things, we have, fo you know, if we have Photoshop Mobile. I'm pretty sure there's an iOS version of Photoshop Mobile. Is there not? Or uh, uh, yes. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, Photoshop again, touch. again, that's a little more. That that could be heavy, you know. But iPhoto is the kind of thing. It's an established brand. People people who use Macs get it. Oh, yeah. iPhoto, great. And so now it can extend their photo editing capabilities. So and it's cool. made by Apple, and of course, everything made by Apple, unless we're talking about Find My Friend, has a beautiful UI and yes. and. Uh, yeah, it's a definite download. Download, so check it out. Yeah, absolutely. Um, if you're into photography, I don't see you know. Yeah. You could take your pictures, tweak them in iPhoto, then upload them to Instagram, and then you're all set. Definitely. And then you can see it on Banjo. And then <laughs> <laughs> oh no! <laughs> all right, we're gonna head back to GDC, even though it was last week. We're gonna go back in time. Um, Anthony Carboni checked out, a, a, talked to the developers of a game called Twerty. Uh, which is a golf game unlike any other golf game you've ever seen. Uh, but first, let's thank our sponsor, Squarespace. Over the past several months, Squarespace has made a tremendous effort to continually improve their user experience. They've released beautiful templates, expanded their help system, and built in powerful features like slideshows that users have been asking for for a long time. And every template on Squarespace has recently been redesigned from top to bottom. So colors, fonts, buttons, all the art, etc. Whole new templates have all been added as well. So you've never been a better time to set up a new site and use one of their pre-baked in templates of the, uh, that are already there. Mm -hmm. Every single Google web font is now available. And if you want to get into the nitty gritty, their CSS editor is a lot more developer friendly now. That's right. Now there's a tons of new things to explore within Squarespace's fully hosted platform that caters to noobs like me and devs like this guy. Um, if you've already got Squarespace site worth showing off, shoot us, a, shoot us an email, let us know what the link is. Sign up at squarespace.com and get 30% off your first three months by using the promo code appjudgment3, appjudgment3, three, the number three. Do it. Hey, what's up guys? Anthony here for App Judgment, your source for mobile application news and reviews. I'm at GDC. I got Kurt and Ramsey with me from Simple Machine. And what are we going to be taking a look at right now? So this game is Twerty. It's a Twitter-powered golf game. Okay. And it's for iPhone. Uh, basically what happens is you type in a word. It checks Twitter for the past 60 seconds to see how many times that word was tweeted. And that number is how far your ball goes. <laughs> yeah. So That's it's pretty awesome. cool. Yeah, yeah. Very so, cool. So at first you have to think of big words, you know. But then once you get on the green, you have to start thinking of those like really obscure words like ham sandwich or pirates or ninjas. So it's pretty good. Very cool. And so 
how many, so it's the exact number of mentions it gets within a second? Yeah, yeah, so it's it, in 60 seconds, however many people tweeted that word. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, so and it's anything. Anything in the world. Yeah, how did you come up with this idea? Man, I don't know actually. <laughs> so, I was playing around with the Twitter API, and then I was thinking, man, this is really cool. And then I thought, this could be a golf game. So, we just started working on it from there. So golf, obviously, multiplayer experience. Uh, what kind of multiplayer modes do you guys have in there? Cool. So there's a local passive play mode that you can play against someone on the same phone if you're stuck at an airport. If you guys are waiting for something, you can go back and forth on the same device. Next week, we're rolling out the async multiplayer mode, which we're really excited about. So you can challenge people on the internet, through a game center, uh, and uh, you can play against people from around the world. And one of the really exciting features that we have built into it is iOS support for Twitter handles. So when you beat someone, you can use their Twitter handle to brag about it and show the entire world you just crushed whoever it was in party. <laughs> That's awesome. And I, and I noticed that you guys have a lot of like different little tweaks for the two-player modes in there, too. Like, So if I use a word, or you couldn't use that word against me later. Right, yeah, yeah. We definitely have like all the gameplay stuff is built in there. So as soon as you start playing, you're playing basically a word game, you know? So so it's kind of be, you know, thinking about words, thinking about the time of day, thinking about what's going on in the world, what's happening right now, you know, is it 9 a.m. on a Monday, people drinking coffee, you know, you might want to use coffee, but you know, maybe on a Sunday the word hangover might work on a morning, you know? Nice. Pretty good, so. I like that. So hangover definitely works on a Sunday. <laughs> yeah. That is universal. Yeah. Thank <laughs> you.